I'm here with Dmitry Aparovich. He's the uh, CTO and founder of CrowdStrike, and uh, we were just having an interesting conversation about uh, what is uh, offensive security or active defense. And uh, a lot of people think uh, you know it's about hacking back, but that's not it at all, Dmitry. Uh, give us a little clue of what's going on. That's right. So if you, if you look at the state of security today, we really have two primary threat actors that we deal with. We have the opportunistic attackers that fundamentally don't care about a specific victim. They care about uh, getting an end result, which may be financial motive, and if they can get money from one organization, they move on to the next. And the traditional model of dealing with that threat actor uh, has been, let's build better defenses, let's build higher walls, let's frustrate them, let's get them to move to an easier target. And that works fairly well. But the challenge we've had in the last, really, six, eight years is the evolution of the determined adversary, someone who really cares only about you and no one else because of your trade secrets, your intellectual property, because they have uh, an axe to grind with you and they want to uh, have a, a destructive activity take place in your network. And for them, making it hard is not going to stop them. Just because you make it hard, they're going to keep trying harder. If it's a nation state with tremendous resources, time, effort, people, they're going to keep uh, warming themselves in through all the layers of defense you have. So the traditional model of defense in depth is not going to work against this atmosphere. So that is why we started thinking about this new concept, active defense. And it's really all about how do you raise the cost and risk to the adversary? How do you uh, utilize detection capabilities that are focused on tradecraft as opposed to specific indicators to find the attacker? The attackers, uh, they have ROI to, to worry about as well. That's right. And they have the cost and the risks, right? How do you attribute them so that they can not, no longer hide behind a wall of anonymity and can actually be outed publicly, perhaps have legal action taken against them both in the criminal and the civil space? How do you respond to their attacks in a flexible manner, utilizing counterintelligence, denial, deception, disruption, uh, to really impact their operations and start driving up the cost and the risk to them? If they're coming in uh, into your company and trying to steal a document and you feed them the wrong information that they then act upon and actually uh, have a significant negative impact on their business, that's going to have a deterrent effect in the future. Or if you attribute them and then provide that information to law enforcement to make sure that they, they can be tracked down or they can never visit another country again, because when they travel overseas there's an Interpol red notices on them, that starts to have a real impact on them. So it needs to be, the defenses need to be from passive, let's try to detect attacks based on indicators and stop them which you can never do 100% and the determined adversary will always get through to focusing more on deterrence, how do you raise the cost and the risk to the adversary. Okay, so, uh, so give me an example of a, 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 a you know, a, a kind of attack that, that uh, somebody could expect, uh, and I don't want to say APT, but this sounds like, you know, the... Uh, the Sorry, attacks. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, a kill chain process, is that what we're looking at here, or where we, uh, we understand what the attackers are going through and frustrate them at different levels and anticipate their moves? That's right. We're looking at everything that they do. How do they re do reconnaissance, weaponization, exploitation, command and control, exfiltration, persistence, stealth, and where can we impact them the most to drive up the cost and the risk to them, right? So at the exfiltration stage, you can substitute a different file. At another stage, you can feed them misinformation about the network so that they're going to take different actions. So how do you frustrate them? How do you deceive them? How do you impact their ability to trust the integrity of the data they're taking? Just like we worry from a defensive perspective about integrity of our data, someone can modify it, we won't know it, that's probably one of the most destru destructive things that they can do to a business. The adversary has the same problem. If they can't trust the data they're taking, then the whole operation is useless to them. And if you employ deception in a strategic fashion, you can actually frustrate their efforts entirely. Thanks, Dimitri, for taking the time out to talk with us. Uh, and uh, everybody check out CrowdStrike, see if they're better. Thanks so much.